Imagine that everything you believed about the apocalypse is on the verge of being completely overturned. Right now, we are about to unveil a hidden truth that has the power to completely reshape your perspective in a matter of seconds. Prepare to be astonished as we present a revelation that challenges conventional beliefs, delving into controversies, and uncovering a transformative force that can revolutionize your life almost instantly. This is not just another ordinary video. It holds the key to a profound and life-altering understanding. Stay with us as we unravel this enigma and discover why thousands of people are questioning everything they thought they knew. But before we proceed, I kindly request your support by subscribing to our channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Now that you've taken care of that, let's dive into the content. In the book of Revelation chapter 12, God revealed to John the apocalypse of Jesus Christ, disclosing to his disciples the imminent events that would unfold. John was chosen as the recipient of this divine revelation, which contains numerous mysteries about the future, warning us that the end is near and the final judgment is inevitable. It provides us with a glimpse of the paradise of Eden and the incredible wonders that await us. Revelation 12 One presents a striking celestial sign, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, and wearing a crown of twelve stars. This phenomenon is the first of seven signs revealed by John, symbolizing a significant and awe-inspiring omen. The woman mentioned in this context represents a crucial aspect, potentially symbolizing the church, Israel, or a maternal figure, depending on different interpretations. The child she conceives is commonly understood as the embodiment of Christ's incarnation, highlighting his redemptive mission. On the other hand, the dragon represents adversity and evil, often associated with Satan, in direct opposition to the woman and the child. This portrays the eternal struggle between the forces of good and evil. In Revelation chapters 12 to 14, key figures and events of the Great Tribulation are described, intertwined with this magnificent sign, serving as an introduction to the subsequent revelations. These revelations unveil the mysteries and challenges that lie ahead for humanity in the end times. By presenting the first of the seven signs, we witness the presence of a woman illuminated by the sun. It is important to note that John does not anticipate a literal manifestation of this woman on earth. Rather, this symbol serves as a divine means of conveying messages to both John and ourselves. Throughout history, the vision of a woman clothed with the sun has been associated with various religious elements. Building upon Joseph's vision, this woman bathed in sunlight is interpreted as a representation of Israel from a biblical standpoint. In Joseph's dream, he is symbolized by the sun, Rachel by the moon, and the eleven stars as the sons of Israel who revered Joseph. Now Joseph joins these representations, forming the set of twelve stars. In the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 9, Joseph recounts another dream where he sees eleven stars, the sun and the moon, bowing before him. In other biblical narratives, Israel, Zion, or Jerusalem are often symbolically represented as a woman. For instance, in Hosea 2.19, 20, the commitment of faithfulness and love is described using marital allegories to emphasize the relationship between God and Israel. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. When the woman in Revelation 12, 2 goes into labor, her affliction and pain are vividly portrayed. She is about to give birth, and the text promises to reveal more about the child's identity later. Subsequently, a formidable and fearsome dragon emerges symbolizing a new layer of challenge and conflict within the narrative. Revelation 12, 3 presents us with another ominous sign in the heavens, a mighty dragon of fiery red color, identified as Satan. The dragon has seven heads, ten horns, and a royal crown or diadem on each head. This manifestation in the sky illustrates that the entity being described is not a literal fiery red dragon, but an allegorical representation that reflects the essence and character of the mentioned being. 
The characterization of the dragon symbolically represents his despotic authority and evil nature, personifying the most fearsome expression of evil. In Revelation 12, the red dragon is depicted with seven heads and ten horns, with seven diadems adorning the heads. The horns symbolize strength, while the crowns represent dominion. This configuration of seven heads and ten horns is meant to convey an image of immense power, comprehensive authority, profound wisdom, and vigor, creating a truly intimidating picture. It is important to note that the term diadems, derived from the Greek word diadema, is exclusively used in Revelation within the New Testament. This term differs from the earlier mention of crown. The distinction lies in the fact that the crown implies a definitive conquest, while the diadem symbolizes sovereignty and command. Therefore, this female figure stands out distinctly from the other women depicted in Revelation. Throughout Revelation, we encounter other female figures, such as Jezebel, who is associated with a religious system that promotes deceptive doctrines. In Revelation 2.20, there is a critique of the tolerance shown towards Jezebel, who presents herself as a prophetess and leads followers into immorality and the consumption of food sacrificed to idols. Another figure mentioned is the great prostitute associated with religious idolatry in Revelation 17.2. It is said that she seduced the kings of the earth with her sexual immorality, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated by her debauchery. We also encounter the bride, symbolizing the church. This analogy is described in Revelation 19. 7. 8. Where the Lamb's wedding is celebrated, and the bride representing the redeemed adorns herself with fine linen that is bright and pure. The linen represents the righteousness of the saints, symbolizing their virtuous actions, integrity, moral courage, and virtue. Now we witness the dragon continuing to unleash more calamities, persisting in its path of destruction and evil. In Revelation 12, 4, it is narrated that the dragon's tail swept away a third of the stars from the sky, casting them to the earth. The dragon positions itself before the woman about to give birth, eagerly waiting for the moment of delivery to devour the newborn child. Verse 9 of the same chapter clearly identifies the dragon as the ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, renowned for his ability to deceive the entire world. Verse 4 also informs us that the dragon was awaiting the birth of the Messiah with the intention of annihilating him. God did not create an entity of evil. On the contrary, he created angels with the capacity to experience profound happiness and accomplish remarkable feats in their heavenly environment. They possessed free will, an inherent characteristic of their moral condition, allowing them to choose between adherence to God or their own ruin. While some, like Michael and his angels, remained faithful, others rebelled against divine authority, becoming fierce opponents of God and his kingdom. The passage also mentions the birth of a boy destined to rule all nations with rigor, referring directly to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who exercises his dominion with determination and strength. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, symbolizing his word, through which he will judge the nations. He will lead them with an iron rod and tread the winepress of the furious wrath of Almighty God, executing judgment upon the rebellious world. The attempt to annihilate the child is initially manifested in Herod's effort to exterminate Jesus during his infancy, an act that extended throughout Jesus' existence with Satan's continuous attacks against him. In Matthew 2.16, 18, we see the narrative of Herod, who, feeling deceived by the Magi, becomes enraged and orders the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who are two years old and under, based on the information he received from the Magi. Thus, the prophecy spoken by Jeremiah is fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. The ministry of Jesus is outlined from his birth to his ascension. The woman described in Revelation 12 gives birth to a boy destined to lead all nations with rigor and justice, and immediately the boy is caught up to God and his throne. The focal point of this passage is clearly Jesus. 
indicating that the woman in Revelation 12, one does not symbolize the church. It is Jesus who establishes the church, not the other way around. Therefore, this woman represents either Mary or Israel, the only two figures that could symbolically give birth to Jesus. A thorough interpretation of Revelation 12 suggests that the woman is indeed Israel, not Mary. The dragon, representing Satan, futilely attempts to devour the child, Christ. Despite Satan's relentless efforts to eliminate Christ, he is born, caught up to heaven, and later ascends after the resurrection. The correct interpretation of who the woman represents becomes clearer when we analyze the metaphors of her labor pains. A prophetic vision also mentioned in other Old Testament texts, such as Micah 4, 9, 10. Micah describes the anguish and affliction of Israel, comparing it to a woman in labor pains. It signifies the nation's suffering and their eventual deliverance from the hands of their enemies. Micah foresaw the captivity of Israel in Babylon, a period marked by acute suffering akin to labor pains. However, even in adversity, the nation would be liberated and redeemed by God. The metaphor of labor pains is invoked again by Micah in his prophecy, symbolizing the ongoing suffering of the nation until the remnant gives birth to the Messiah. Such prophecies brought a message of hope as the Messiah would come to lead and strengthen his people with divine authority. The symbolism of labor pains reflects the tribulations of the nation of Israel, foreshadowing their purification and renewal. In Revelation 12, 6, 7, the woman finds refuge in the wilderness, a place provided by God where she would be sustained for 1,260 days, equivalent to 42 months or three and a half years. During this period, a celestial battle unfolds as Michael and his angels confront the dragon. The dragon and his followers engage in combat, while the woman seeks refuge in a divinely designated sanctuary, symbolizing the spiritual community, the true people of God, who are preserved throughout the challenging 1,260 days marked by suffering, persecution, and adversity. Contrary to popular belief that Satan resides in hell, he is not currently there, although his final destiny is that place. The common depiction of Satan with red features, horns, a tail, and a pitchfork significantly deviates from the biblical description. Interestingly, Satan has access to heaven, as demonstrated in the book of Job, and can even appear before God. A celestial battle ensues, with Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon and his allies. The dragon is defeated and cast down to earth, along with his followers. The book of Revelation, specifically chapter 12, depicts a significant spiritual conflict where the adversary and his followers rise against the heavenly kingdom. However, the dragon's rebellion ultimately fails as the archangel Michael, acting as the divine defender, leads the heavenly hosts. This leadership role of Michael is confirmed in Revelation 12, 9 and Daniel 12, 1, where it is prophesied that Michael, the great prince and protector, will arise during a time of unparalleled anguish for the nation. At that specific time, all of God's people, every individual recorded in the Book of Life, will achieve salvation. Michael and his angels triumph, expelling Satan and his followers from heaven to earth. One of Satan's main tactics against the devout is slander. Hence, he is known as the accuser of the brethren, as described in Revelation 12.10. A powerful voice in heaven proclaims the arrival of redemption, divine reign, and the authority of the Messiah, for the accuser has been deposed, the one who accused our brothers before God incessantly. According to Revelation 12:9, Satan is destined to lose this battle. The great dragon, the primordial serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the universal deceiver, was cast down to the earth, and his angels shared his fate. John presents a straightforward approach, a strategic triad that has aided the faithful throughout history in resisting Satan's attacks, protection, confession, and courage. The influence of Christ's triumph on the cross, nullifying the power of Satan and sin, is proclaimed. Redemption is announced, and power is manifested in Revelation 12:10, 12, 12. A heavenly exclamation declares the arrival of salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, 
as well as the power of his Christ. The accuser who accused them before God has been cast down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, not fearing death. Therefore the heavens and those who dwell in them are called to rejoice, while woe is pronounced upon the earth and the sea, for the devil has descended with great wrath, knowing his time is short. The defeated accuser, Satan, found his downfall through the manifest power of Christ, demonstrated in his victory on the cross, and through his sacrifice and resurrection. Through this, Christ affirmed his dominion and authority, extending salvation to all who are now freed from Satan's accusations by Christ's redemptive work, as outlined in Romans 8. 1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The consequence of this celestial expulsion is detailed in Revelation, emphasizing our need for the redemption Christ provides to overcome Satan. We also triumph through our testimony and perseverance. However, the earth must be cautious, for Satan, enraged by his thwarted plan to annihilate the Messiah, redirects his fury towards the woman described in Revelation 12, 13, 17, who gave birth to the male child. However, the woman is granted the ability to escape to the wilderness, supported by the two wings of a great eagle. This allows her to find refuge in a place of safety and protection, where she is nourished and shielded from the trials and evil forces. In a desperate attempt, the serpent, representing Satan, tries to overwhelm her by spewing forth a river of water. However, the earth comes to her rescue, swallowing the river and thwarting the serpent's attack. Enraged by his failure to achieve his goal, the dragon declares war against the rest of the woman's offspring. This refers to those who keep God's commandments and hold fast to their faith in Jesus. Despite facing relentless opposition, the faithful offspring remain steadfast in their resistance. As mentioned in verse 6, the woman seeks refuge in the wilderness for protection during a period of adversity. After emphasizing the impact of Christ's victory over Satan, this narrative is revisited and expanded upon. The woman is depicted as being given the two wings of a great eagle, symbolizing a providential escape to the wilderness. This safe haven will shelter her for a specific period known as a time times and half a time. The imagery of the eagle recalls the Israelites' deliverance during the Exodus, as described in Exodus 19.4 where God carried them to safety on eagles' wings. Satan, however, continues his relentless persecution of God's faithful followers. Despite his futile efforts, his repeated failures only intensify his fury. Consequently, he directs his antagonism towards other believers who faithfully adhere to God's commandments and hold firm to the testimony of Jesus, as illustrated in verse 17. This highlights Satan's deep-seated enmity against those who place their faith in Jesus. The events narrated in Revelation provide a timeline of these occurrences. The woman symbolizes the faithful remnant of Israel who gave birth to Christ and is subjected to persecution by Satan. However, divine protection is bestowed upon her. Consequently, Satan redirects his hostility towards the other offspring the believers who faithfully live according to God's commandments and hold fast to their testimony of Jesus. Chapter 13 of Revelation foreshadows Satan's future plans of opposition, particularly targeting those who remain committed to obedience to God and loyalty to Jesus. This reveals Satan's continual efforts to challenge the authority of the divine, as established throughout the book of Revelation. The book portrays a grand spiritual battle that unfolds throughout human history, culminating in the final events that signify Christ's undeniable victory over the forces of evil. The book of Revelation goes beyond depicting cosmic and earthly conflicts. It brings hope and guidance to the faithful in the face of adversity. The divine protection extended to the figure representing Israel and the subsequent defeat of Satan reaffirm God's promise of salvation and redemption. This section of Revelation, rich in symbolism and prophecies, motivates believers to remain resilient in their faith. It reminds them that despite the ongoing struggle between good and evil, the ultimate outcome favors Christ's victory. Christ's crucifixion and resurrection transcend mere historical events. They constitute the cornerstone 
of Christian hope that triumphs over earthly afflictions. The certainty of Satan's ultimate defeat and the eternal salvation of the righteous serve as an invitation to unwavering commitment to Jesus' teachings and living in alignment with God's commandments. As we await the culmination of all things, may our hearts be filled with gratitude for the assured victory in Christ Jesus. Believers are called to be beacons of light in a world longing for redemption, remaining vigilant and prepared with their lamps lit, anticipating the imminent redemption. If one feels weary of a life distant from Christ, there is an invitation to take a transformative step and begin a new chapter by accepting the Lord Jesus as the only and sufficient Savior. This choice marks the beginning of a renewed journey, walking towards the welcoming embrace of the Father, where the fullness of His kingdom awaits, free from pain and tears. If the content has been valuable, there is a request for support through subscriptions to not miss any upcoming videos. Together, there is a desire to enlighten more minds and expand understanding. Thank you for being here, and may God bless you.